What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can make a game like The Binding of Isaac. And this is actually going to be a series of videos, so this will be the first video and I'm going to show you how to set up the project and do the player movement. This series is going to be for absolute beginners. At the end of the uh, series you should be able to make a game very similar to the one that you saw in the preview at the very beginning. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway to get started you just need to download Unity from the internet. So just go on Google, type in Unity, it should be the very top link and you can go ahead and download it. If you can't figure that out then you're probably not going to make a game successfully, so you might as well just get up and uh go work at like a mcdonald's or something but anyway um yeah i already made the series before but the quality of the videos especially the audio was really bad and everything else in the series was also pretty much wrong because i had just started developing in unity my background is in um banking i make boring bank applications so yeah nobody wants to watch how to make those obviously so we're here here we are um but anyway yeah uh, like i said you just need to download unity from the internet when you open it you should get a screen it looks like this one and uh yeah you just press new project here on the right and then after you do that you'll want to choose 3d urp core so that's this one you can name your project something and then click create project uh, sorry, it should be 3D URP core, not 3D core. So just scroll down to this one and then just click download template and then click create project. All right, so after your project finally loads, this is what you'll see. So you've got your sample scene that you're inside of. This is the scene view. So this is where you actually set up the scene and all of like the um, assets that are gonna be inside of your game. This is the game view. So this is what the camera sees. So by default, you have this camera, right? Which you can double click on. You can't see it, but there's a camera here, right? And it's looking off in a certain direction and that's what the game view is showing. So if you rotate the camera, you should see um, whatever in the bottom right, you can kind of see like, as we move this, you can see that it's affecting like where the camera is looking. And that's important because that's like, where your game is like when you actually play it that's what you're going to see right when you click on any of the game objects that are in the hierarchy which is on the left here you can see all the settings for the objects on the right side of the screen in what's called the inspector anything that you click on in your game you can see the settings for it and like these are just plain english like the transform is like where the object is and how it's rotated in the scale the light 
you can change like the temperature and the filter and the color and how bright it is and stuff like that. Like th this is just self-explanatory. You can just click on any object and just read what they're doing. If you right click in the scene on the left, you can create other objects. So there's like 2D objects, 3D objects. There's a bunch of default objects that you can use. We're actually going to add a plane. So if you go to the 3D object in the list here, you can click plane and this will create a plane right so when you create this if you look on the right here you can see that it didn't put it at the origin it actually put it where the camera is because you had the i had the camera selected right so there's a you could set all these numbers to zero which will fix it or in the top right you can click reset and that will reset all of the values inside of this to the default settings pretty much all of these options on the right all have a reset option so if you mess anything up you can click reset and it will reset it to the default on this plane we're just going to make this significantly bigger than it is right so the plane is flat so if you look at the top right here there's the axis right so the plane is flat on the y-axis so we don't need to worry about changing this but on the z and the x we want it to be significantly larger so we're just going to type in 40 on the x and 40 on the z to make it way way bigger um, we're going to shrink this at a later time okay we're just making this massive for right now so that we can have a lot of room to run around with our our character that we're going to be adding to the game okay so now that we've added the plane to the game we need to add our character to the game so the plane is going to be the floor that the character is going to walk on and the character needs to get added to the game so our character we can't add it via this menu right this is just for standard objects that come as part of unity right you can't add a model to the game via this list you need to add it via the project at the very bottom here the project is where the actual files for your game are stored so like any models or assets or like materials or pictures or anything that you have inside of your game is all going to be stored inside the project file these are the actual files like if you right click this you can show it in the file explorer and this is all of the actual files for your game, right? So what we want to do is if we right click on this folder called assets, we're going to create a folder and we're just going to, oh, it didn't create it. Whoops, create folder. And we're going to call this models. You really want to do your best to make sure your folder structure is named correctly. If you don't, when you have tens of thousands of files inside of it, you're going to have to restart your project. I had to do that, so don't make that mistake. Um, so I created, oh, this is the thing. I created a um, model specifically for this. So stick wizard tutorial FBX. This file is available in the description of the video. You can download it for free. Um, yeah, you could just go in ahead and download it right now. It's a little bit large, five megabytes. Maybe I'll zip it before I upload it. But yeah, so you just drag this FBX file into this folder. And when you do that, um, you can access it. So yours might look like this. So if you want to make this into a details view, you could just drag this like draggy bar at the bottom. I probably shouldn't have attached all the animations to it because that's what made it so large. But anyway, um, so after you've done that, you can drag your stick wizard tutorial into the hierarchy on the left. And when you do it, it will put him into the scene. Now you'll notice that he's halfway under the ground so we want to take half of his size and just move him up in the left here of the scene view there's some tools to um, move your character around and do stuff so this is the grab tool which just moves around like the screen you could also just hold your middle mouse button to move around the screen this one moves objects so this is the move tool we're just going to drag him up so he's above the ground uh so it looks like that's around 2.9 in the y-axis and his default pose right now it looks like he's picking up an object because that was the last animation that i worked on i think for this model so that's not what he's going to be doing when we actually play the game now so if we go we want to basically add the animation of him idling so if you right click on this stick wizard tutorial on the left here you can go to the prefab and click unpack that will unpack him so that he's not connected to the model anymore okay and then what we want to do is inside of the model itself at the bottom here if we click rig on the right we can select create from this model for the avatar and click apply and then in the animations we want to find his idle animation and just scroll down here and where it says loop time we're just going to turn that one on and click apply so this will make it so when he's doing his idle animation, he'll do it over and over and over again. If you click on the idle animation, idle wizard or idle, I don't remember which one it is. Uh, if you click play, you can see what it looks like at the bottom here. So he's just like kind of moving around um, a little bit. Looks like there's like a silhouette of like his legs or something. I don't know why it's like that, but 
Yeah, he puts his staff in the air. I think he goes flying upwards. And then I have this other idol. I don't know which one is better. Maybe they're the same thing. I don't know. He does the splits. <laughs> I don't think that's the one that I use. But uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what we want to do is after we've set that up, um, if we go to Stick Wizard Tutorial on the left here, you can add components to your character by clicking Add Components. So we'll click on him on the left, and then we'll click Add Component. And we just want to type in animator. So the animator is how we do animations, as you probably guessed. And we want to drag his avatar that we created into this slot. Now, if you did this before you created this, it would already have this animator attached and it would have the avatar in it. So inside of this stick wizard tutorial, make sure you put it as a drop down. Like, so if you drag this draggy bar, you can put it as a drop down. Um, if you find his um, avatar, which is right here, you can drag it into the avatar slot on the right. So then it's looking for something called an animator controller. This is how an, uh, animations are controlled. So if you right click at the bottom here, we can create a animator controller and we'll call this player controller. So inside of this models folder, I'm going to create another folder called player and I'm going to take the player controller and the uh, model and I'm going to drag it into that folder. So again, you want to make this as clean as possible. I'm not really going to try too hard to make it clean because again, this is a, just a tutorial for you guys. But for you, you should make this as clean as you can. Otherwise, you'll have problems later. So uh, yeah, anyway, you'll drag this controller that we just made into the controller slot. So now that both of these are dragged in here, if we double click on the player controller, you get this screen. This is the animation screen. This is actually um, the different states of your character. So if we right click in this like graph looking thing, we can create a state for empty. Now, when you do this, it automatically creates a line from entry to this new state because there has to be a default state for all of your characters. So this is what he'll do by default. If you don't do anything in the scene, this is what he's automatically going to start doing. So what we want to do is if we click on Sick Wizard tutorial, there's a bunch of animations under this and we want to just pick one of the uh, idle animations and drag it into the slot here. So I'm just going to use idle. You could use idle wizard if you want. It doesn't matter. And then we're just going to name the state idle. So now if we run the game, he's automatically going to be doing this idle animation. So let's save the game and we'll run this. And the camera is on his feet because this is the default camera position. The, his idle animation doesn't make sense from a side view, so don't judge my animation, please. Um, if you click on your camera on the left, we can move the position of the camera and we're just going to move it to like 100 or maybe just maybe 69. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the rotation of the X probably needs to be 90. And then Z can actually be zero. So it's like directly over him. All right, because it's a top down game, right? So this is like you can see he's animated and that kind of stuff. Now, before you exit or you, before you press play to stop it running, because we move the camera while the game is running, we need to copy these settings. The anything you change while the game is running inside the inspector will not stay the same. If you change anything in the project, it will. But if you change anything in the scene, none of these settings will save unless you um, like actually you can't save the settings. So what we need to do is because we move the transform of this player, if we click this option and like these three dots on the top right, we can copy the component. And now when we stop this, like I said, if you look in the camera in the bottom right, these settings didn't get saved. It's just looking at his feet still. So if we click on the camera on the left, you can paste the component values and then you can see that it's saved the location of the camera. All right, so now that we have the character um, doing his idle animation and it's all set up and in the scene, we want to move the character. So in order to move that, we're going to add another component to the character. All of these things on the right, like all of these things that are underneath the stick wizard model, these are called components. That's important to know because when you go to access them in the code, they're called components. So you can look up the different components and you can edit all the settings of the different components in the code. So we're going to add a component and it's going to be a character controller. So if you just start typing, you can type in character 
and you should have a character controller option. All of these settings need to be drastically changed. Uh, I'll go over the settings later, but for right now, we're just gonna leave it like this. Now we need a script. So if we click add component again, we can type in player movement. We're just naming the script here. And if you click new script, um, you can click create and add, and that should add the script and create it at the same time. Okay, so then what we wanna do is when you create a script like this, it puts it in the main assets folder. We're just gonna drag it from the main assets folder into the player folder. Now you should probably create a folder called scripts or player scripts or something like that. I'm not gonna do that because this video is like already really long. So if you double click on it, it should open up like this. If it doesn't open up like this, it means you probably don't have Visual Studio installed. So if you go on Google and type in Visual Studio, you can download the community edition for Visual Studio for free. If you actually plan on selling your game, you have to get like the pro version. So if you don't wanna pay any money for it, you have to use either Visual Studio code or you can use Notepad++ or that there's a lot of applications available to edit code. So when you open, when you actually open this, it looks like this. Okay. So we're just going to erase these two methods that are here by default. And we want to get a reference to our character controller. So everything on the right here is a component, right? So we want to access this character controller component inside of our code. So what we want to do is if we type public character controller controller, and we save the script, if we go back to our game, you can now see that there's a slot for a con character controller in the script. So we can drag our character controller into that slot and then we can use it inside of our code. So inside of the update method, which I deleted, update is a method that runs every frame, okay? There's different variants of update. So there's update and there's fixed update, which runs 50 times per second. So if you want something to be more uniform instead of running every single frame, uh, you can use fixed update instead, which is actually a better practice because let's say for, for example, for me, my computer is really good. So my, my game will run at 240 frames per second, but maybe a player is playing on a console and they're going to get 30 frames per second. Well, we want these to be as close together as possible. You can fix it using time Delta time anyway. So like you can get the time and multiply it by how long it's been since the last frame and you're going to end up doing that anyway but uh fixed update is what we're going to use for right now uh so like i said this only runs 50 times per second whereas regular update can run up to 240 times per second um actually update will be better let's just use update and we'll just uh yeah all right so now we need to get the, the input that the player is doing so like if you click a w s and d you want your character to move around right so we just want to type in float h is equal to input dot get axis raw and we're just going to type in horizontal so get axis raw will get a number between negative one and one Okay, so let me just use paint to demonstrate what it's doing. So input is a thing that's built into Unity. So input could be keyboard movement or it could be your controller, act like your controller um, stick thing being pulled or whatever. You can set up the input in the project settings. So I'm not gonna go too far into this, but for right now, uh, I probably will at a later time, but if you go to the input manager, you can set up how you do input. So like, if you look here, this is the input manager, right? So if we hit left or right, this is the negative button. Left is the negative and positive is right. Also, A and D are left and right. There's also gravity and dead and sense. And there's all these settings, right? So, but if you're on a controller, um, so let's... Uh, carry on with horizontal um, joystick. So get all mo motion from joysticks. So so this is set up by default to work. So if you plug in a controller and you just try to use this, this will already be working. You don't have to do anything. So it's set up in such a way where you don't even have to set this up. But obviously for a game like The Binding of Isaac, it has to work on controller. Otherwise, like I don't know if you've ever played The Binding of Isaac on a mouse and keyboard, but it's awful, right? So getting the axis will just get a number between negative one and one. So zero is not moving at all. And if it if you are holding one of the buttons in the input manager that goes to the right, so the right key or, or um, D, I guess in this case, it, the number will go towards one. 
And if you're holding A or left, it will go towards zero. The reason this is important is on controller, there's a whole range of numbers between these two numbers, right? So like if you're holding it at 0.5, like halfway between this, it will only do that much. So this impacts how fast your character will move and you can choose to make it do that or not. But yeah, so this is how the code will work. So if I'm, uh, this will get a number between negative one and one, based on how hard I'm holding the button on the left. And on keyboard and, uh, on keyboard and mouse, obviously that number is either negative one, zero, or one. There's no like sensitivity on keyboards, right? So it's the same thing for um, the vertical axis. So we're just gonna get the axis raw for our vertical. And again, this is a number between negative one and one. Negative one is obviously down. Positive one is obviously up. So we're storing, this is called a variable. We're storing this number in this variable. So every frame we're gonna be getting this variable and we're storing it here, right? In this, uh... okay, so now we need to check if there's any input, right? So if we type in if h is not equal to zero and um, v is not equal to zero. So if either h or v is not equal to zero, then we need to make him move, right? So if like zero means he's standing still, if the input for horizontal and vertical are both zero, that means he's standing still. But if it's not zero, which is this exclamation mark means not. So this is the equal sign, this is the not sign, this is and, like both of them are true, right? So if both of them are not equal to zero, um, actually it should be or. So this is the or symbol. So if if horizontal input is not equal to zero or the vertical input is not equal to zero, then we want to move him, right? So we need to get a reference to our animator. So the same way we got the reference to our character controller, we can get a reference to what's called the animator, right? So let's type in public animator and we'll just call it A. And th this is the name of it, by the way. So this is the type of thing that it is, which is the animator. And this is the name of it. So you can name it whatever you want to. You don't have to name it A if you don't want to. When you add this as public, it will show up on the right. So if we click on our character again, uh, you can, oh, I already did this, but you can drag your animator into this new slot that just got created. So like this slot that just opened up, you could drag the animator into it. And remember that you can get any component that's attached to the player this same way. So we've added the character controller to the code. We've, we've added the animator to the code. Anything that's in this list, like you could add the transform to it if you want to. Like if you wanted, you could type in public transform T if you wanted to, right? And then you could drag the transform into it and you can alter the settings for it the same way, right? And all of the settings that are listed under this, like the character controller, for example, if we type in controller, dot slope limit like all of these settings you can edit them just by calling dot and then the name of the setting okay so it's it's very simple to to do that um but anyway let's so let's save this so now that we have a reference to our animator we want to play the animation so we're going to type in a dot play to play the animation and we're just going to type in walk here so we're we need an animation called walk Right now, the animator controller doesn't have an animation called walk. We only made an idle animation. So if we go back to our animator, we can right click down here and create another empty state and we'll just call the state walk. So, and then we want to drag our walking animation into this slot here where it says motion. So again, at the bottom, if you go into your stick wizard tutorial model, you could just find one of the walking animations. Um, let me just find this one at the bottom walk to and we can drag this into the slot. Okay, so now it will work, but when you're done walking, it won't stop playing. So what we want to do is you could just make a transition to idle. I don't like doing that because what will happen is once you have like 50 animations in here, this will turn into like a spider web looking thing where it's just unmanageable or whatever. And in cases where like his attack, there's like 10 different animations he could do for his attack or whatever, right? And it just turns into like a spider web too quickly. So we just want to play walk and then we're going to put an else statement. So if this is not true, then we want to play the idle animation again. So we'll just type in idle here, whatever we've named this, make sure that the name is right. 
So if the input is not zero for either of the axis, then he's going to walk. Otherwise, it's going to play this idle animation where he's just standing still. So now if we go back to the game and we run it, you can see that if you click on the character like uh, A or W, he'll start walking. Now you'll notice that this doesn't loop because we only set the... Um, so if you're holding in the button, it will stop after one iteration of it and then it will go back to idle, right? It's because we didn't set it to looping. We set the idle animation to looping, but we didn't set the walking animation to looping. So if we go back to the model and we go to the animation tab on the right, we can scroll down to whichever walking animation that we picked. In this case, I think it was walk two. I really shouldn't have exported all of the animations. I might, um, in the one I export, there might be less than this. I might just only keep the walking and the idle one so you don't have to like look at all of these possibilities. Uh, also, it will shrink the size of it. Uh, but anyway, if you click on this and you scroll down, you can turn on loop time. This will make it loop, so it will happen over and over again and then click apply. And then if you run it again, you should see that the animation is looping, so it will just keep happening over and over again. So you can see that He's not moving anywhere, but he is doing the animation. So I just want to show you one other cool thing that you can do. So if you go back to the animator, you can go to parameters here on the left. Let's click plus and there's a float option here, right? And we'll call this speed and we'll set this to one. OK, and if we go to with walking animation, we can have this be multiplied by speed, right? So what what will happen is if um, we are, we're going to input the value, which is the input into this. So when he's moving forward, it will be a positive number. And when he's moving backwards, it will be a negative number. So he'll kind of do the animation in the reverse order. So we're going to multiply the animation by a negative. Uh, so when he's going backwards, it'll be a negative. Let me just show you. It'll be easier to understand if I show you. So what we're going to do is while he's walking, we're going to do a dot uh, set float because this is a float value that we just added. See this speed value? We clicked float here. So we're gonna set this float to be the input. So we're gonna just do, um, H plus V divided by two. Oh, you gotta put in the value that you wanna change. Okay, so it's speed is the name of the float. And then this is the value that we're gonna enter. So the reason we're doing H plus V divided by two is that he's either moving horizontally or vertically. So let's say he's, oh, no, because then diagonal will go faster. That won't work. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do H plus V, but we're gonna do math F dot clamp. We're gonna clamp this at uh, one and negative one. So that's the value. And then the minimum can be negative one and the maximum can be one. This will still make the diagonal faster. This is probably not the greatest way of doing this. I didn't like I didn't do this in my actual game, so it doesn't matter. Clamp just takes a value, which is H plus V in this case, and it sets the minimum and the maximum. So it can't go below negative one and it can't go above negative one. That way, when he's going diagonal, it won't be going two because if you add them together, it'll be two. Right. So um, this is just going to we're, we're not going to be keeping this, but I'm just showing you how you can change the speed based on how much input there is. And uh, if you're on controller, this will make you walk slightly slower if you're not holding the joystick all the way. Uh, let's just see how this works and see if it's any good. Hang on. Like I said, I didn't do this for my actual game. He just walks straight the entire time. So like if you're walking to the right, he does that. And if you're walking to the left, I don't know if you can see it, but his foot is actually going backwards. And uh, he, he's not turning yet, so you can't really see that at all for the actual walking and moving. Um, let's actually move him. So right now he's not moving, so let's actually make him move. So let's take the character controller. So controller dot dot move. And then we want to move in a vector three. So we don't have a vector three right now. We only have H and V, right? So we need to make a new vector three. So new vector three, sorry, uh, vector three move gets new vector three. And it's going to be horizontal zero vertical. So a vector three is just the um, the axis, right? So H, so it's three values, right? X, uh, 
X, Y, and Z. Y is like vertical, like up and down. So we don't want him going upwards and downwards because it's a top down game. So he can only go up, down, left and right, but he can't go like towards the camera, I guess is what uh, Y axis is. So we want to move based on how he's moving. So if you type up uh, this, the movement function takes in a vector three and a vector three is just like the three numbers paired together. So X, Y, and Z. And then we need a speed, I think, for how fast he's moving. We're not going to bother for right now for how fast he's going to go. It's just going to be the default. So let's so like right now, you can see this is way too fast. All right, so let's get out of this. Let's go back in here and we need to set the speed for this. So if we multiply this by like a new variable, so we're going to put a variable at the top here and we're just going to call this public float speed and then we're going to multiply this by the speed and we're going to set this to 0.01 f so if you make a variable like a, a base type variable like a float which is just a decimal number right public you can edit it in the inspector the same way that you drag in these objects so if we run this again we should see that there's like an option to change the speed so like see his speed here is set as uh, nothing but we're just gonna why is this doing this 0 0.01 okay so if we go down right and up and left it freezes the animation for some reason but if we go just directly left or directly right Okay, so let's just... Okay, and obviously the reason that it doesn't work is because um, if you're going left, that's a negative one. And if you're going up, that's positive one. If you add them together, that's zero. So it doesn't do the animation because it's zero. So what we have to do in this case is we're just going to get rid of this. Uh, we don't really need that for our game anyway. He's, his animation is so based, like he does the exact same animation regardless of which direction he moves. So that's how you could multiply it. And again, you wouldn't use clamp. You would have to uh, do the math or whatever. I don't know how to do it uh, right now off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, anyway, so we're just going to get rid of that and th that should fix that problem. So now we need to make him actually look where he's going. So this is the code that makes him look where he's going. I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. But if you're new to Unity and game development, this might be very challenging for you to understand how this is working. So we're creating a plane here, right? This this is similar to an actual plane, like this game object, the, the floor that he's standing on in the game, for example, that's a plane, right? This is a, an imaginary plane. So this is a, a physical real game object plane, right? But we're creating here is not the same thing. It's an imaginary plane that's like uh, just a endless flat plane that is um, what we're going to be using. So we're creating a plane which is going to be the target for our mouse right so our mouse is going to be able to be on the plane anywhere on the screen we're going to cast a ray using the where the mouse is so we have like the input mouse position to get the screen um, position now this obviously is not going to work for a controller so on controller the way that it works in the binding of isaac is if you're um you can turn your character in one of the four directions by holding up left down or right this is for computers so this is for my game for right now i'm probably going to actually change it to the way it is in the binding of isaac because it has a challenge aspect certain monsters in order for you to shoot them they have to be able to hit you back because of like if it's only in one direction you have to go into the direction that the monster is able to shoot I'm on a tangent here but anyway this gets the point on the screen this is how you could make your character look at a point on the screen then we have this variable called hit dist and we are going to output the um the result of the ray cast to this um hit dist variable okay so we're casting a ray at the plane and we're getting where the mouse is on the plane and we're outputting it to this float variable now the float variable can't like that's not an actual value it's just a number right it's a number between again uh negative one and positive one so we're getting this point uh as a vector three using ray dot get point and then we're getting the quaternion which is a rotation just think of quaternion as rotation i don't know why they had to use such a complicated word for this but it's just a rotation value so like you have a vector three which is like the location of like where it is the rotation is called the quaternion right so this is the difference between where our mouse is and where the character is so we can rotate the character towards the mouse and then we're going to set the transform dot rotation you don't actually have to put the word this here this is uh just something that i have 
memorize. I, I'm a bank, a bank developer, so we use the word this in uh, normal C sharp, but here we transform. This defaults to the transform attached to the game object. So right now we have a transform attached to the game object here on the right. Um, this is the plane, but on our character, we have a transform as well. This script is attached to the player, right? So this is getting the transform of the thing that uh, the script that we're attached to, which is a player. And we're setting the rotation to be the rotation. So we're moving it from the rotation that he is to this target rotation. And this is the speed at which he will turn towards that uh, rotation, right? So let me open paint and I'll try to explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is your character, right? And he's looking this way. This is the default, right? So slurp, what slurp does is it's moving between this, his rotation, which is where he is, to wherever the mouse is. So let's say the mouse is here. It's gonna move the rotation towards this, right? But instead of immediately moving, cause this is, remember, update runs every single frame, right? So we don't want him instantly to teleport. What if you move the mouse to here, right? If he instantly teleports, it will look ridiculous if he just teleports all, like he changes his rotation instantly to down here. So what this will do is Slurp will slowly move this from this rotation to this rotation. This is the maximum distance it can move per frame. So it can only turn 50 uh, rotation, like 50 degrees per frame and it's 50 times time dot delta time so again update is running every single frame time dot delta time will be the time since the last frame so that on all devices it will run at the exact same speed so even if you're playing this on a phone or if you're playing it on a computer with the best performance in the world it will still turn at the same speed if you don't multiply this by time dot delta time it will yeah this is a this is a decimal number that is the time from the last frame so that this number will be significantly smaller. I hope this makes sense. Uh, it's really confusing. That's why I just pasted the code in. Just copy it. You're not going to understand. Like, if this is the first time you've made a game, this is a lot of stuff to throw at you at the same time. So you've got an imaginary plane. You're getting a point that's on the plane. You're outputting the point to a float variable. You're converting that to a vector. And then you're getting the rotation di difference between the current rotation or the current position and the target point. And then we're slowly rotating from this rotation to this rotation. And this is the maximum speed that it can rotate per frame. So yeah, like that probably blew up your brain into like millions of pieces. Uh, I get that. So, and like I said, this is not the way that you would do this in the actual game. In the actual game, you only want to rotate it either horizontal or vertical, and you would just be using the inputs. So like up, left, down, and right, you won't be actually using your mouse, your mouse for targeting. Although you could use the dot product of that, and I'll do that in a later video. I'm not going to do that right now. But you can see now we're looking the direction that we're going and walking around. So the last thing that we need to do is make the camera take the position of the player. And uh, let me just show you how Slurp is working. Let me just change this from 50 to one so you can kind of understand better how it's working. So if we change this to one, so see my mouse is here, but my character is slowly turning towards the mouse. He doesn't instantly catch up to it. This makes it way smoother. If you don't do this, it's like, really glitchy so like if you made this number too high or you didn't use slurp and you just set the rotation to be the target rotation it looks like crap anyway i'm not going to show you that because this is already like a really 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 long video uh but yeah so this is pretty much it so then we just want to set the camera so we're going to use late update for this so if you type in late update and press tab we need to get a reference to our camera so at the very top here we're going to type in public camera and you could just call this cam or whatever, right? And then in the late update, we just want to set cam.transform.position is equal to transform.position plus new vector three. And it's going to be 0, 0.690. 0. And we actually want this to um, smoothly move to the new position. So let's set that up so vector three new position is equal to transform oh, sorry vector three move towards and then we want to take the camera position which is cam.transform.position and then we're moving it towards the player position so we're going to be just take this entire thing because this is the new target position right so let's actually set this up here vector three target position 
it's equal to this, right? So this is the player's position because this script is attached to the player. And this is going to be adding 69 in the y-axis. So it's going to be 69 units above the player rather than being, if it's all directly on top of the player, you won't even see the player because it'll be inside of him. So this puts it 69 units above it. Remember, this is X, Y, and Z. So 69 in the y-axis is 69 units above the player. And we're going to be moving between the position and the target position. And then maybe we'll do like the same thing 50 times time delta time, or it could be even way less than this. So maybe we'll just try one and see how that goes. So again, we're not instantly teleporting the camera above the player. We're going to be slowly moving it from the position that it was to the target position. And this is the maximum speed it can go per frame. So the maximum distance that it can actually move per frame. So what we need to do now is drag the camera into the script. Again, I don't know why my speed is not visible here. Maybe I just need to like. Okay, my speed is 0.1, by the way. I don't know why it doesn't show. Yours will probably show a number there. It should be say 0.1, but I just, I can't see it on mine for some reason. So now when I move, so 0.1 is obviously too slow, but you can see that the camera is slowly catching up to the player. We want this to be significantly faster. So we're actually gonna make it 50 to match the rotation speed. That might be still, that might be way, way too fast, but whatever, let's just see. Okay, so it's not too fast. 50 is actually still too slow. So we're just going to change this to like 150. Sorry, my cat's having a meltdown. Yeah, so you kind of get this where... Um... Okay, so when we go closer to the edge, you can actually see the player moving better. So maybe his speed 0.1 is probably too fast. So let's just make this 0 0.01. So he's like moving slower. 0 0.05. You can just play around with the speed until you get something that you like. So you can, yeah, you can see him moving around the edge. So this is how movement works in a game like this, right? And we get this ugly shadow here and stuff like that, that we're going to end up getting rid of or whatever. But yeah, you can see the movement better when we're at the edge. All right, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be posting more videos in this series on how to make a game like The Binding of Isaac. If you get stuck on anything, I've linked to my Discord in the description of the video. I idle there usually between the hours of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And there's other people in there and we just chat about the game and there's people making models and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you're welcome to join my Discord. And if you get stuck on anything, I'll probably just help you for free. So I don't really have too many subscribers so i can uh if i get time i'll help you if you get stuck but uh yeah uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one